Oklahoma Gardening is a production of the Oklahoma Cooperative Extension Service as part of the land-grant mission of the Division of Agricultural Sciences and Natural Resources at Oklahoma State University, dedicated to improving the quality of life of the citizens of Oklahoma through research-based information. Underwriting assistance for our program is provided by the Oklahoma Department of Agriculture, Food, and Forestry, helping to keep Oklahoma green and growing. Today on the Best of Oklahoma Gardening, host Casey Hinches has beautiful plants for any and every corner of your garden. We look at a showy native bloomer, some surefire tropical plants to add pizzazz to a planting bed, an aromatic giant, unique mums for fall color, a collection of great shade garden plants, and some sun-loving begonias. We've got a showstopper that's blooming in our garden today that I wanted to talk to you about. This is Spigelia marylandica, or also called Indian pink. Um, you can see that it has these beautiful one-sided uh, signs that have these red trumpet flowers on them. And when they bloom, they bloom open, burst open to make this yellow star shape. And what's nice about these flowers is they're pretty long blooming flowers. They'll bloom from the end of May through June. And because of that, they're actually really readily available as a nursery plant that you can buy. They are, however, native to Oklahoma, but you're more likely to find them on eastern Oklahoma than western Oklahoma because they really prefer heavy shade and rich, moist, organic soil. Even when this plant isn't blooming, it forms this nice, about a foot and a half tall, almost like a shrub fill, even though it is a perennial that uh, regrows from the ground, with these nice glossy leaves. This is a 2018 Oklahoma Proven Perennial of the Year um, and is hardy from zones five to nine. In a time when we're all looking for a little bit of an escape, but yet traveling can be difficult, staycations have become quite popular. Now typically that means being a tourist in your local area. There's no reason that you can't convert your backyard into a tropical paradise with the addition of a few plants that have bold foliage and bright colors. To give us a dramatic backdrop, calicaceas, also known as elephant ears or taros, come in a wide array of patterns, colors, and sizes. Anywhere from lime green to more of almost a black color, they can range in height from one and a half foot all the way up to nine feet tall. Now calicaceas do prefer full sun and moist soil, and in fact do well even as a bog plant in water gardens. They're hardy from zones eight to 10, which means they're most likely gonna be tropical, but we have on occasion had them over winter here in Oklahoma. In Hawaii, you'll often see this taro grown as an agriculture product because the root is used to make poi. Now this particular one I'm standing in front of here is called mojito and is prized for its speckled pattern. We also have another one here called coffee cups that the leaf actually folds up, creating a cup-like effect. While there are several calicaceas on the market, each offering their own unique style, if you really want something that's gonna grab people's attention, you wanna get Thai Giant. It's one of the largest calicaceas that are on the market. And you can see just one leaf will provide plenty of shade. While cannas is an obvious choice to add to a tropical backyard paradise, another plant you might wanna think about is called Cestrum. This is a uh, evergreen 
perennial in zones eight and south. However, here in Oklahoma, it will be marginally hardy, but often will die back to the ground and still recover. You can see it grows quite a lot in one season, getting up to about six feet tall. Now this particular cultivar I'm standing by is called Orange Zest, which offers this nice kind of a pale orange flower. And it is fragrant, but you'll notice the fragrance that really starts to express itself more in the evening hours than in the daytime. However, with that tubular flower, you're gonna find plenty of pollinators throughout the day on it, including hummingbirds and butterflies. Passion vine is another plant that'll give you that great tropical look with its alien, almost tropical-like flowers. With over 400 different species in the genre, there are many different passion vines to choose from. However, this one is incense, which is actually hardy and will overwinter here and gives you this lovely dark purple uh, flower to it. As the name implies, it is a, a vine that will tend to climb. And once it's established, it may even start to sucker for you. In addition to the flowers, you'll also get those lovely passion fruits off of this plant. Now, don't be surprised or alarmed if you see any orange spiky looking caterpillars or maybe several hundred orange spiky caterpillars on this plant. It's actually one of the preferred host plants for the orange golf fritillary. Now, while many species of the passion vine are tropical, there are some that are hardy and there's even one Passiflora incarnata, which is native to Oklahoma that you might wanna try. When you're designing your tropical paradise in your backyard, you can't forget to add some color to those containers. Now I know when we talk about designing a container, it can get a little overwhelming and seem complicated when we talk about spillers, thrillers, and fillers. So if you wanna look for a simple alternative, just buy a Tacoma and put it in the container. This plant, a one gallon, will grow quickly into a three to four foot tall shrub, which will be nice for a large container. Now this particular one is a cultivar called Bells of Fire that has more of an orangey, kind of a reddish flower. There's also one called Orange Jubilee. And then of course the one that we most often see is Yellow Bells. While some people call this plant Tacoma and some call it Yellow Bells, I actually learned this plant as Esperanza, which in Spanish means hope. Who says you have to go to the tropics in order to get bananas? In fact, we've had banana plants overwinter for us here in Stillwater. Now, when you're trying to get hardy bananas to overwinter, the first few years, you wanna make sure to layer some mulch on the roots as those roots are trying to get established. But as they continue to grow, they're going to get more cold hardy for you um, as they get a bigger root system. Now, this particular species is Musa volutina, which has a pink sort of, of a velvet bananas. Now, these are best uh, enjoyed by just looking at them rather than tasting them. Now there is a species that is actually even more cold hardy, Musu Baju, which is cold hardy all the way up to zone five. So if you're a little bit concerned about trying this one, you might try that one for a little bit more cold hardiness. Regardless of which species of banana you choose, whether it's hardy or tropical, you're gonna either get green or maroon foliage, giving you that nice tropical look. So you can see, even though you can't get away to your tropical location this year, there is still hope when you turn your backyard into your own tropical paradise. to highlight another annual that's often overlooked in the springtime but really shows off a lot in the fall once it's had a nice warm season to continue growing and that is Cassia alata or now it's called Senna alata as they've changed its genus but this is the plant behind us commonly known as candelabra or candlestick plant and often you buy this as an annual just in a four inch or a small one gallon pot but you can see how tall it gets up to nine and sometimes 15 feet tall. You can see here it easily has reached nine feet behind us though. Keep in mind when you're buying this plant in the spring, you're gonna get a lot of bang for your buck. In fact, what we're looking at right here is just three little plants that were originally planted in here last spring. 
you want to make sure also not to plant this at the front because it's definitely going to get some height on it so it makes a nice backdrop to some of your other annuals. Now this plant has very large compound leaves as you can see. The leaflets itself get up to be about three to four inches uh, in length here and each one of this is considered a leaf here and these are the leaflets. Now the flowers will continue to bloom up this spike. You can see how it's been blooming for quite some time. And as you come up here, you can see that it's got several more buds to open up. But the flowers, as they open, they do look like, sort of like popped corn. Now this plant should not be confused with the popcorn plant, which is another senna that we'll take a look at. So here we have another Senna or Cassia, and this one's common name is the popcorn plant. And you will undoubtedly recognize the smell when you smell and kind of rub the leaves and smell of them. It definitely smells like buttered popcorn. In fact, it'll make you want to go to the movies. But this plant is known for this fragrance, but also has a lovely flower as well. You can see it has a similar flower to the other Senna that we mentioned earlier. Um, it does look like kind of popped corn um, once those buds start to open up. But you'll notice that these buds actually have a bit of a darker look to them, whereas the others were more yellow. Also going back to the leaves, you can see that while they still have pretty long leaves, a compound leaf, the leaflets are actually much smaller and they do have a point to the tips of each one of those leaves as well. Also when you're rubbing them, you're going to notice that there's more of a velvety texture to these leaves. Now you can see this plant doesn't get quite as tall. It has a range of about six to 10 feet. Now both of these are annuals. So when you buy these in the springtime, they're definitely not gonna look like this. They're gonna need a full summer long time period to grow in order to get this established look. But just in one season, you're gonna have an annual looks this large in your garden, giving you that tropical flair. So often when we think about chrysanthemums or mums, we imagine these nice, perfectly rounded mounds of flowers that come in bright colors of reds, yellows, and oranges, and often pink. While we think of these because they're so nice to either put into the landscape or put into a container and tuck in a few pumpkins, this isn't the only way we can incorporate mums into our landscape. In fact, this is more of an annual mum. A lot of times we treat this, we just put it in for the one autumn season, and then we dispose of them after that season. But we have a few other mums here at the gardens that we've incorporated into the landscape. And this is a nice addition to also think about adding into your landscape. We've highlighted one before called Country Girl, which is a nice lime pink color. But here we also have one called Autumn Bronze. Now, being a low maintenance gardener, a lot of times mums need to be pinched back. So often when you buy some of those mums for the fall season, there are a few, depending on the cultivars, that are winter hardy and you can get them established in your garden landscape. Now, depending on which ones you get, some of them have been bred to sort of be self-pinching, meaning you don't have to do anything to them in the summertime in order to keep that nice round shape. However, there are some that still require that pinching in late June in order to maintain that shape. But being a low maintenance gardener, I don't really like that added necessity, uh, that added chore to do in the garden. So here we have some that we haven't pinched and you can see the nice kind of sprawling habit that they create. This particular cultivar is called Autumn Bronze, which gives you this nice kind of golden copper color in the garden. 
There's another cultivar that we've added called Brandywine Sunset that has a nice cheerful yellow center to it with that yellow eye and then kind of trails out to more of a pink, pale pink color on the margins of those petals. We also have one called Peaches and Cream that have a nice bashful look with the white and the pink mixed together and again that yellow button center to them. Each one of these are a nice addition to the garden landscape. They'll get to be about two and a half to three feet tall. And while they wait all season long to take center stage, a lot of times you'll find that some of the other perennials sort of overshadow them. And so what's nice is they come in and almost fill in those spaces between your perennials. Um, you might find that they don't necessarily have that habit because we haven't pinched them, but they really do well to kind of create a nice filler amongst all the other plants. And they they add a new dynamic late in the season. It's almost a resurgence to your garden when just you think it's almost finished. Again, with all of these, if you wanted to create more of that clumping habit, you could do that by pinching them back in June, and that would create that clumping habit. But we like the spreading habit here. And again, it's low maintenance. Now, these plants require a moist but well-drained soil with a neutral pH or maybe slightly acidic. The nice thing about mums is that they're also deer resistant and they're a nice addition for those late season pollinators flying through. As the sun begins to grow more intense as we continue on into those summer months, you might find that you're headed more under the shade of a tree when you're out gardening. If you've ever considered building or constructing a shade garden, here are five features to consider adding to your garden in order to make it a respite during those summer months. While shade gardens traditionally aren't as bright and colorful as a sunny garden, that doesn't mean they're any less visually interesting. You can always add flowering plants into your shade garden, but you also want to think about the foliage. Consider adding plants that have variegation or have foliage that is yellow, white, or even blue. Hostas, heucheras, and sedges make great options for getting foliage interest as well. The other thing with the foliage, you want to think about the texture. Having different textures will also create visual interest in your shade garden. Adding strappy leaves such as the hardy ground orchid or ferny-like leaves from our sensitive fern, as well as bold foliage from bear's britches will all add interest into your shade garden. Also when you're planting your shade garden, think about adding mid-level plants or understory plants. It's one thing to plant the ground with small herbaceous plants, but you also want to utilize that space between those low plants on the ground and the canopy of your trees. That makes a great place for small woody shrubs to grow, as well as small trees such as dogwoods and redbuds. We also have here an example of a woody shrub that works well and provides, again, some interesting foliage as well. This is dwarf fothergilla, and it's actually a cultivar called Blue Shadow. Now you can see it not only gives you great blue leaves, but in the springtime it'll have a white bottle brush-like flower. Not only does this provide blue foliage during the summertime, but this foliage will also provide nice fall foliage as you go into those autumn months. Now, while this one is deciduous, consider also adding evergreen shrubs into your shade garden. Akuba, Japanese Akuba, is another great example of an evergreen that is also variegated to continue giving you interest in the foliage. After you've planted your herbaceous plants and you've got your woody understory plants in place as well, you may think you've planted all you can do in your shade garden. 
but there's more room that you're not utilizing. Consider adding hanging baskets in your trees. While we might not live in the deep south where Spanish moss drapes from the trees, there's no reason that we can't also grow plants from our trees. Here's an example of what we've done. There's a lot of different methods of using different hooks um, to hang plants from your trees, but what we've done here is taken a simple rebarb that we've curved into an S shape. One side of the S goes over the branch and the other half of the S helps hold and support the basket. Because this is a temporary display and only out here during the summer months, we don't have to worry about this damaging the branches too much. But we do keep an eye on it and I would suggest that you do also if you decide to go with this. The other thing about this is the bigger the branch, the bigger the plant. Nothing cools you off faster than water and adding water into a shade garden not only creates a cooling effect but also a calming effect. Water also is a great feature to add into a shade garden to block out any noises that you might not want to hear. And it doesn't have to be that large of a water feature. Just adding something as simple as this that creates a slow trickle will enhance that meditative experience that you might get in a calm shade garden. Not only that, but it will also bring birds, butterflies, and maybe a few lizards to the shade garden as well. After all your hard work to create a shade garden, make sure you incorporate a few features to sit back and enjoy your shade garden that you've just created. Include a hardscape path so that you're able to get in amongst those plants to really enjoy them and also be under the shade of the trees. Adding a bench will not only create a destination, but again, a place to sit and enjoy those plants. Also consider adding things like a bird feeder, an arbor, or other garden art to really personalize it and make it your own space. The days are getting hotter, and as a gardener, sometimes it's hard to not overdo it in the heat. But adding a shade garden may just be the relief that you need. Begonias used to be one of those staple plants, especially in the shade garden. But like so many other plants, there's more and more cultivars coming on the market that allow us to push plants into kind of a different environment than what we traditionally used to use them for. Similar to coleus that used to be always in the shade and now are introduced into the sun, we also have wax begonias that we can push into the sun as well. Today we're here in the trial gardens and I always enjoy walking through the trial gardens, especially later in the season to see really what has survived when it comes to the annuals. And it was the begonias that really grabbed my attention this time walking through. And here in front of us we have one that's called Double Up. And this is a true uh, wax begonia. It's a newer cultivar and this one is the red variety. And you can see it's got its name Double Up because it has small double flowers. Now back in the day, if you were gonna push any of the wax begonias into the sun, you wanted to use the ones that had more of that bronze foliage because they didn't scorch quite as much in the sun. Now this one has been growing just fine all season long in full sun. And again, as a reminder, being in the trial gardens, basically they're planted and watered, so they really don't receive a lot of maintenance. So we kind of evaluate how well they do in a low maintenance situation. Now you can see it does have some dead flowers on it that do kind of um, sort of self-clean, but it will continue to bloom even if you don't deadhead it. Over here we have the Double Up Pink, and you can see it has the traditional light green foliage. Again, this has been growing in full sun all season long and has done fairly well. Again, it's got the double flowers. Now if you want the white flower, this series also has a white variety available. The one that really caught my eye, however, was not a, a true wax begonia, but it's just on the way, so let's go take a look. Now the wax begonias are Begonia semperflorens, and this is Begonia banariensis. And you can see it looks like a wax begonia, but on steroids. And you probably are, can understand why it might have grabbed my attention being out here in the trial gardens. It's just a beautiful plant and has done well for us all season long. 
It's got huge flowers that are about an inch and a half in diameter, and you can see how many flowers it has on one cluster there. Again, it still kind of has that wax begonia look to it, but instead of the leaves being round, they're a little bit more like that angel wing begonia that has more of a, a one-sided angel wing shape to it. So while the other wax begonias are a little more compact, only getting to be about a foot tall, this one's going to get to be about 18 inches to two feet tall. It's just a beautiful example of how you can incorporate begonias into your landscape. Now this particular one is called Surefire Red, but if red's not your color, you might look for the Surefire Rose. It will have more of a bronze foliage to it and then of course a rose colored flower. Now I know this isn't the time of year to be planting annuals as we kind of trail off and go into winter, but it's never too late to start planning for next season. Next week, Casey will have some fun projects for the garden. We'll plant a pot of salsa, build a bamboo box for trellising, make an inexpensive planting bed of blocks and boards, and travel to Kingston for Leon Sloan's recycled wicking containers. Until then, we wish you health and wellness, and we'll see you next week for more Oklahoma Gardening. To find out more information about show topics, as well as recipes, videos, articles, fact sheets, and other resources, including a directory of local extension offices, be sure and visit our website, oklamagardening.okstate.edu. And we always have great information, answers to questions, photos, and gardening discussions on your favorite social media as well. Join in on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can find this entire show and other recent shows, as well as individual segments on our Oklahoma Gardening YouTube channel. And tune in to our OK Gardening Classics YouTube channel to watch segments from previous hosts. Oklahoma Gardening is produced by the Oklahoma Cooperative Extension Service as part of the Division of Agricultural Sciences and Natural Resources at Oklahoma State University. The Botanic Garden at OSU is home to our studio gardens and we encourage you to come visit this beautiful Stillwater Jewel. We would like to thank our generous underwriter, the Oklahoma Department of Agriculture, Food, and Forestry. Additional support is also provided by Pond Pro Shop, Greenleaf Nursery and the Garden Debut Plants, the Oklahoma Horticultural Society, and the Tulsa Garden Club.